And when I talk about the complexity of photosynthesis, of modeling photosynthesis, it has to do with the fact that there are three separate processes that are all involved in giving us a net flux of carbon dioxide. And this is kind of represented here. This is Rubisco. This is the primary carboxylating enzyme. This is where carbon dioxide enters uh, the photosynthetic process. So here you have a carbon dioxide uh, molecule from the atmosphere. And this basically you know, is, is fixed on a RUBP by Rubisco and it forms a carbohydrate. This is grossly simplified. I acknowledge that. Now this carbohydrate, of course, is used in respiration. So you have actually carbon dioxide entering through photosynthesis and you have carbon dioxide leaving through respiration. In addition to carbon dioxide being taken up by Rubisco, so too is oxygen, and that drives photorespiration. When this oxygen is taken up by, by Rubisco, then the end product is, is carbon dioxide is released. So you have three processes. One process takes up carbon dioxide, two processes release carbon dioxide, and all this is happening through the stomata. So when you're modeling the gas exchange through a stomatal aperture on a leaf, you're really trying to understand three completely separate processes. Admittedly, the CO2 and oxygenase, these two activities, are related through the Rubisco enzyme, which fortunately simplifies the model quite a bit relative to what it, what it could be otherwise. Now, in order to understand uh, how the Farquhar model works, you have to understand a little bit of biochemistry, and I'm assuming that everyone in this room has taken some level of biochemistry at some point in their life. I'm not going to get too involved in that, except to show here that there's this, um, um, uh, the michaelis menten response curve is an important component of the, of the photosynthesis model. This is the velocity of a reaction, basically how fast a reaction is going to proceed, and this is the concentration of your substrate. And typical biochemical reactions look like this blue line. And from this blue line, you could determine two parameters. One parameter is Vmax, the maximum rate of a reaction, assuming you have an infinite amount of substrate present. So that is the upper limit of how fast that enzyme can catalyze a reaction. And then you have this term, the Km, which is the Michaelis constant. If you take one half of Vmax, and in this cartoon diagram I just made Vmax 1,000, so you take a, a, a velocity, a, rate, a reaction rate of 500, and you just go ahead and extrapolate to what substrate concentration do you need in order to be at one half of your maximum velocity, well, that's going to give you your Michaelis constant. So this is sort of your affinity. The lower your Km, the easier it is for a substrate to find its way into a react, an active site on an enzyme. And the higher your Vmax, generally the more potential you have to, to carry out a, a reaction. So Vmax and Km or Ka, some K value, are the really important components of biochemistry that all basically link into this, this response curve. So I just wanted to give you that overview because um, it's going to come up a few times throughout this lecture. And by all means, if there are questions, again, interrupt me. Because I know that there's probably a wide range of expertise in these types of things. Some of you might actually just be like, well, I'm not really learning anything new today. Others might think that this is so new that I went too fast and I do have a habit of talking too fast. So if you look at the Farquhar model in its most simple form, that's saying your net carbon assimilation. So this A represents the flux of carbon dioxide between the leaf and the atmosphere is going to be a function of Vc, so that's the rate of CO2 uptake by photosynthesis, minus 0.5 VO. Now VO is the rate of release, well actually VO is the rate of oxygenation of Rubisco. So you know, Rubisco can take in the carbon dioxide, it can take in the oxygen. When oxygen is taken up by Rubisco, it drives photorespiration. This 0.5 basically means that for every one oxygen taking up by, taken up by Rubisco, you get half of a CO2 being released. So in order to get one CO2 released through photorespiration, you have to have two oxygenation events. And this RD represents the mitochondrial respiration. That's a CO2 flux coming out of the leaf as a function of that carbohydrate being metabolized by the mitochondria. So basically, if you're Photorespiration is really high and your mitochondrial respiration is really high. Uh, your VC in turn will be low. You end up with negative carbon assimilation. Um, you know, so you're basically just taking the gross uptake and you're subtracting away these two things that are releasing the carbon dioxide. 